Today we're going to give you a hands-on introduction to Wikidata. We're going to talk about, uh, about a, uh, another project called Wikisite that builds on top of Wikidata, and we're going to try and pitch it to this audience to see if there's something that you might be interested in contributing to. Um, this is going to be a hands-on session, meaning that after an introduction, we hope you can bring out your laptops and uh, start basically following the instructions. Daniel is going to give some demos, and we hope you can at least try your first edit on Wikidata if you've never edited Wikidata, and uh, at least learn about the, uh, the mechanics of how the project works. Um, OK, so with that, uh, quick show of hands of how many people have heard or uh, used Wikidata before. Yeah, good, good, good. How many of you were in the other session um, on Wikidata? OK, that's, uh, OK. So you, you'll see something I already presented there. Today we're going to go a bit more in depth about how Wikidata functions. Um, Wikidata is. Um, a knowledge base that anyone can edit, right? So it's pretty much Wikipedia, but for structured data. Um, the original rationale for Wikidata comes from these info boxes that you've probably seen everywhere if you browse Wikipedia. So there's a ton of structured information on Wikipedia or on search engines, right? The knowledge panels that you come across whenever you Google something. That's pretty much the same idea. This is the, um, the, no uh, the, the info box for uh, Marie Curie um, in the English version language of Wikipedia. And of course, there's very rich information with sources about where Marie Curie was born, when she died, cause of death, et cetera, et cetera. And um, of course, all this information exists in um, 300 different languages, in every single language edition. And all of this needs to be maintained individually in every single language edition. So it's a, an extremely complex problem uh, for maintenance at scale. So the very first... Uh, um, rationale for building Wikidata was, hey, what about we centralize all this information? We create a database that people can edit so we can represent the structure information and serve it to all the different language editions of Wikipedia, right? And so this is basically what an entry on, Wiki on Wikidata looks like. This is the entry about Marie Curie. Uh, you will see everywhere uh, these little Q um, uh, codes. So a Q followed by a number, that's a unique identifier that Wikidata uses for identifying entities. Um, and the typical entry for um, an item like Marie Curie looks like this. There are, uh, there's a, um, a label at the top, there, are, there is a description, and there's a, a number of statements that you can predicate of this, of this entity to um, describe properties of the entity. So I'm going to go a little bit more in, in details about what that means. Um, first off, at a high level, just to give like a, a, an overview of what Wikidata, Wikidata is, um, like I said, it's uh, um, the data version of Wikipedia. Uh, all data is CC0, so subject to no copyright restrictions. Anybody can contribute, humans, machines, institutions. Uh, it's basically your infrastructure. It's not anyone's infrastructure. This is why we're really hoping that you can embrace it for your projects. Uh, it covers all domains of knowledge. It's not domain specific. It uh, aspires to be a, a general knowledge base about any item, any, anything you can name. It is fully version controlled. It's collaborative. Uh, it is integrated with a semantic web via RDF dumps, open APIs. Um, it has a Sparkle endpoint for those of you who are into the uh, querying capabilities. We're going to come back to that uh, a little bit later. Um, it is stable in the sense it's not tied to any short-term um, short funding cycle. Uh, it's there to stay for the long term. Uh, it is being actively developed. Uh, it has a full stack that is uh, uh, open source. And it has a very active community of contributors. In fact, uh, it's the fastest growing project among the largest uh, Wikimedia projects at the moment. Um, Wikidata knows about lots of things. There are currently 50 million entities and counting. Um, and uh, there are almost, yeah, more than half a billion statements as of yesterday. Uh, predicated of these entities, and these statements are a result of uh, 760 million edits that the community has been contributing so far. And if you drill down a little bit into the anatomy of an item, you'll see first off a few important features of Wikidata. Uh, multilinguality. Um, all items, like I said, are identified by this uh, Q number, but to make them human readable and accessible to people in different languages, they also have uh, labels and descriptions that basically localizes information across a variety of languages. This is what the uh, entry for Marie Curie looks like uh, across a sample of languages. Like I said, we have statements. Statements are really the uh, atomic components uh, of a Wikidata item. 
Uh, the TV consists of a of a, um, a predicate, like a property, that links to another item. In this case, uh, uh, the property is instance of, and it predicates that Marie Curie is an instance of a human. And you can see that every claim also has a very granular support for references. So um, there are a variety of ways in which you can link a specific statement to the provenance of the statement. And another super important feature of Wikidata is that it has a growing body of identifiers. Of course, there's a, a ton of information about any entity outside of Wikidata. And we want to make sure that Wikidata represents all these mappings so that uh, people can actually find this information, not necessarily on Wikidata, but on these knowledge bases that our organizations are maintaining. So um, you'll see for any entry, dozens of identifiers that represent uh, all the mappings to other knowledge bases in the linked data ecosystem. Uh, we talked a little bit about the anatomy of an item. Uh, let me say a few more words about the types of content you can find in Wikidata. Uh, like I said, Wikidata is domain general. It's not about any single um, topic. So you can find uh, contents about people, about buildings, about astronomical bodies, um, about creative works. We're going to come back to that in a moment. In a moment. Um, and I'm going to give you a few examples of the types of content you can find currently in Wikidata. The GeneWiki project has been contributing over the years some amazing, um, highly curated contents um, extracted from the, uh, the literature um, on all areas um, of relevance to bi bi um, biomedicine. Um, we have uh, full ontologies. Uh, we have uh, um, entities for, uh, for genes um, in humans and other species. Uh, we have information about drugs, and so on and so forth. Uh, we also have extensive data about species. This is a fantastic um, animation uh, of uh, uh, the full list of endemic moths in New Zealand uh, that you can query and um, retrieve with all the metadata associated with them. Of course, we have also mundane queries you can ask Wikidata, such as the, the, the members of the current British Parliament with ancestors uh, identified as mythical. Um, if you disagree with this, of course, you can look up uh, and fix the, the references or the statements. Um, but that's something you can, you can also obtain from Wikidata using the query service. And since we're in Canada, we have a few examples of things that Wikidata knows about Canada. We have a biologist with Canadian citizenship. Uh, for individual institutions, uh, we are building uh, co-author graphs um, of these authors. This is an example for authors that are affiliated with McGill. And this is an example of awards. Um, Wikipedians, Wikidata contributors are really mad about <laughs> awards. They're really, um, um, they're really trying to complete as much possible record of uh, all known awards, uh, especially for notable scientists. And you can find here records of uh, um, all awards to um, scientists affiliated with McGill. So I'm going to focus for a second on a specific type of content we did that I haven't really talked about, and that's creative works. Um, bibliographic metadata is one uh, prominent type of structured data. So it actually makes a lot of sense to think about storing in Wikidata, information about sources using pretty much the same strategy that we've seen here. So Wikidata has extensive information about our creative works, journals, publishers, and all the other types of items that are associated with these entities. Um, so back in 2016, we started a project called Wikisite that really builds on top of Wikidata with the goal of creating a structured bibliographic repository um, using the same technology that we presented before um, to serve as a foundation of free knowledge. And this is a very broad mission statement. Um, the original use case was to support Wikipedia and the sourcing needs of Wikipedians. But in fact, as you'll see later, Wikisite is currently serving a much broader set of use cases. There are bibliographic corpora for a variety of reasons that have nothing to do with Wikipedia. So we're going to come back to that in a moment. But the, um, the fundamental idea here is that if you have in Wikidata information about the sources themselves, you can start annotating the links that connect specific statements of knowledge to the sources where these statements exist and to all the information you have about the sources and their provenance. For example, um, this is a statement that says that um, Zika virus, uh, identified by that Q item, has as its natural reservoir, um, you'll see P is an identifier for the property, it is in Cilia a very specific, um, sorry, um, uh, a species of a mosquito uh, that is stated in this paper 
as a species that carries, like, um, potentially carries a Zika virus. Um, so you see here how a statement is extracted from literature, can be represented in a machine readable way in Wikidata, and how this statement can be connected to the entire um, institutional provenance that resulted in this piece of knowledge. Uh, so we know that this research has been funded by the CDC, uh, has been published in, in this PLOS journal, and the publisher itself is a public library of science. So you can connect any, very, any single example of a granular statement to its entire um, uh, provenance uh, as represented uh, uh, by different items. And to give you a sense of uh, the state of the art of Wikisite, uh, we currently have uh, 90 million items that represent sources. That's about 38% of uh, Wikidata. We've seen a really important growth in key bibliographic properties. We currently have uh, 3.1 million um, um, author statements. Um, author strings represent strings that don't re yet resolve to um, 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 items. Uh, we have a uh, growing, still small, but growing coverage uh, of uh, book editions. We have 40 million DOIs. And the last property is one that Daniel probably is going to talk about later. Um, it's a property that annotates the main topic of individual papers. I mentioned that the, the original use case for Wikisite was to serve Wikipedia across languages. And in fact, as of today, we have uh, all scholarly articles cited with identifiers across 300 language editions in Wikipedia, all represented as items in Wikidata, um, whether they use a DOI or an identifier for, from PubMed or PubMed Central. We have pretty broad coverage of scholarly journals. Um, this is an example, actually, from um, last year. Um, web Science, well, the core collection of, website, of Web of Science uh, includes uh, roughly 32,000 scholarly journals. Currently, we have uh, 42,000 um, journal entries in Wikidata and, and counting. And given that we're trying to include uh, all information we have about bibliographic records, and citations tend to be public domain data. We have now some good sources of citation data. We started ingesting into Wikidata the citation graph for these papers. So we currently have uh, 130 million citation links that connect items uh, that cite each other. I also mentioned that we have a very spe specialized corpora. So uh, corpora that have not uh, they don't have a specific relation to Wikipedia, but it can serve a purpose as a highly curated uh, um, linked bodies of knowledge for specific communities. So this is an example of uh, what we think is the entire uh, scholarly publication corpus on Zika virus. Uh, it's a couple of thousand papers, uh, fully annotated with authors, institutions, um, through a series of like a human and automated curation processes um, as an object that can be studied and visualized uh, and, and um, built upon. And this goes back to what I was showing before. We can link a scholarly paper to very specific assertions that it supports. So um, in this example, you can retrieve uh, all the statements that Wikidata uh, knows about that are extracted from the specific paper. So for example, you can see statements that state that um, um, a specific protein um, has a, a specific function uh, or serves a specific biological process. And finally, um, Wikidata is pretty agnostic in how it represents references, and there are different mechanisms by which you can represent the provenance of a statement. In this case, uh, um, you can see that um, a statement is sourced to uh, a specific paper, but there's a further qualifier uh, that allows you to identify through an annotation the specific fragment in that paper, the specific location in that paper where the statement can be found. Um, so that provides additional support beyond a traditional citation to identify uh, the, the source of a specific statement represented uh, in this item. And we have also very powerful open source applications that allow you to aggregate and represent um, all this information in a, uh, in a human friendly uh, way through uh, many reports. And I think Dan is going to give you some examples later on. So, Without taking too much time, I don't know what we're doing uh, time-wise, I'm going to move to uh, the demo section. So um, maybe you can bring up your computers and see if you can follow Daniel's instructions.
Yeah. Okay, yeah, so this is going to be a demo, so some of it will go wrong, um, and <laughs> that's part of the, uh, the experience. The session is going to be recorded, the slides are up on Figshare, and so if anything goes wrong, you can always go back and then retry it, and hopefully then it will work, or at least you will then have the, uh, to know how, how far you can, you have to advance the video to that point where you actually have the solution. Okay, so um, let's see what we got. Here are a few suggestions of what we think we can do. We don't have the time to do it all, so we will kind of see how you react and then jump between those things. We can create a Wikidata item for someone who has authored a, a, a work. We can add a paper to Wikidata uh, by way of its DOI. We can annotate the Wikidata item for a paper with additional information, like what is the main topic. We can, uh, for instance, annotate uh, a Wikidata item about a conference, like FORCE 2018, as to who has participated. So. You, uh, it could be recorded that you're all here, and we can query Wikidata for information like who participated in Force 2018. Okay, so any anyone has any strong preferences for this? Otherwise, we just go in order. We don't have time for lots of thinking about it, so we just move on. Um, so here, uh, Wikidata, like um, any wiki, basically has a mechanism to create uh, new pages. So uh, on Wikidata, this is called create a new item. So here I can go in and, and can create a new item um, any, or about anything. We actually wanted to record, for instance, that Kristen Ratten gave a keynote speech yesterday at Force 2018. We noticed she doesn't have a Wikidata item yet. So uh, we will create it now. Um, so Kristen Rutten is a human, so uh, in Wikidata term, uh, we will put her, her name as a label. As a description, we can say, well, um, open science technologist or something like this. Uh, if I get it wrong now, it's not a problem. We can always fix it later. And then she might be referred to as k.ratten or something like this. Oh, not, not this way, k.ratten. Okay, and then the item is created, but uh, so far uh, it's not categorized as anything useful. You wanted to say something? Um, so we have to tell that what Kristen Rotten is, and so uh, we just say it's a human. Then the system tech, what kind of concepts it has that are known in, hu uh, as, in English as human. Citation needed. <laughs> yeah, if anyone has a good citation as to whether she's a human or something else, then please put it in here. Um, <laughs> And uh, also, we wanted to add her ORCID uh, ID, for instance. The problem is she doesn't have one, which after the lesson she gave yesterday is um, a bit surprising. Um, so you can all check it. If you find it, we can put it in here. Um, and uh, yeah, we can, for instance, say that she's a female um, and so on. So that's, that's how you create an item. And uh, of course, you can do this. You can go in and uh, if you speak a language other than English, you can fill in uh, how, uh, how she's named in, in your language, and you can describe her, and so on. So now we have that. Uh, you know how to create an item. It, uh, it's very simple. You just go to here is this special create a new item that's here linked from the sidebar. This sidebar will be important for later parts of the demo. Um, did anyone follow? Did anyone try it on their own? Can you add the affiliation? Probably, yeah. What should I put? Coco Foundation. Coco Foundation. Let's try that. OK. Um, so I, it asks me for occupation. I'll, I'll ignore that. Affiliation. Here we go. And then Coco, singer, collaborative knowledge. Here we go. So boom. Um, yeah, and so on. That's, that's how it works. Uh, of course, it would be nice to have a ref reference, but yeah, in the, the time constraints of the demo, I'll not do that. That's left for later. Um, from the left sidebar, there is this create a new item here. And uh, the other option is to go from the slides where I have a link here. Uh, special new item. Or you can just type special new item this way with capital N, capital I, into the search bar on Wikidata. Anyway, that was part, part one of the demo. Next one is pick a DOI. We prepared one that we actually um, scraped from Twitter from people who are tweeting about most recently published stuff so that uh, this thing is not in Wikidata yet. So this is one of 
Kristen's papers. Ah, this is one of her papers, but it is in Wikidata already or not? <coughs> it's not, not so. Enough. At least it wasn't this morning. Let's check whether it's in there. So we have a tool that you can ask uh, whether this DUI is known to Wikidata. It says no, but it c comes back with some sort of a um, TSV um, data format that I can then send to another tool. Here we're in terms of interoperability. And if I'm logged in with Wikidata, I can tell the tool, please run. And so it runs. Here we go. And now we have an item about this paper written by Kristen Rutten. Right now, it's, she's represented only as an author name string because that's what we get from the databases. And we, but we can fix that uh, because we know it's her. Um, I can basically go and add a statement that she's actually the author. Um, here we go, Kristen Rutten, and now she exists in Wikidata. Of course, she existed before elsewhere, and I can remove this one, um, and we're good. Actually, no, because in Wikidata we should stay that uh, there is uh, she was the only, the first author on this. Um, Otherwise, the system has a hard time figuring out the number of authors, um, uh, or whether someone is missing, for instance, and so on. So now we have an item about a paper that we uh, created just by throwing a DOI at the system. Uh, so if you're, uh, you have ma machine-readable metadata and, and so on, then we can do these kind of things. And Wikidata actually does that at scale. So most of those paper items that we have, they have been created using such tools. We don't sit there and manually typing the bibliographic metadata. What? Three more minutes, okay. Um, well, now maybe let's go to the item about the Force 2018 conference and everybody uh, tries to add uh, their name there. Uh, if, if, if you have authored a scholarly paper, there is a certain chance that you already have an item about you. So for instance, I see Gunther Eisenbach, we can try that. Uh, I'm quite sure we have an item about him. Uh, so, TH. Here we go. Uh, we actually have two items about you. Maybe one of them is with the orchid, the other one without. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll take the. Uh, I'll, I'll leave that to, to be sorted out later. So we just put in uh, Kristen Ratten here, uh, and you can you can fix it. Uh, that's too much for a demo. I don't have the time. So here we go. Now Kristen is officially a participant. Actually, she was a speaker, so we can uh, we can add her in under speaker as well. And so, if you have an item and you find it this way, you can uh, add yourself as a participant. If you don't have an item yet, then check whether you have anything that has a DOI or something that you could use as a proof for existence on Forwiki data, basically. And then you can create your own item. Um, some other things we wanted to show Wikidata queries. So uh, here is one institutions where Canadians got their PhD from. Um, for instance, Boom. So here you see some Sparkle, which is basically just a language uh, to... I'm going to say one word about Sparkle, because I, how many of you know what Sparkle is? Okay. For those of you who don't, uh, it's basically a language that is uh, similar to SQL, but it's slightly more complex. It allows you to query uh, uh, a structured knowledge base, like Wikidata. Um, what uh, Daniel is showing here is the uh, query service, which is an extremely powerful way of uh, pulling and visualizing this data, and there's a very and the tutorial allows you, even if you don't know Sparkle, you can use to try and explore these queries. Yeah, now Daria has stolen all my time. Oh, um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so what I wanted to show... Sorry, but if, I think there's two or three minutes, so if you want any questions... If I want any questions, okay, well then... We I, I think we can finish this, I mean, we have still like six minutes, so... <laughs> yeah. People have to get in and out of this room. Okay, finish this, <laughs> finish this nice. Um, okay, well, so here you have the query about, um, well, where people from Canada did their PhDs, basically. Uh, the, the point is that it, we have, uh, yeah, some tools that actually also facilitate such querying. So Scolia was already mentioned, so let me just briefly uh, show where, where, where did it go now? Here. So for instance, here we have a Scolia query about Canada. That's basically an overview of what uh, research has been published about the topic of Canada, if that loads. And uh, importantly here is um, you get a set of queries. These are live queries that take uh, <laughs> a few seconds to run. And uh, all of these queries are editable, so you can g actually go in and then change, for instance, uh, Canada to Botswana or something. So here I'll go in. And uh, somewhere here, there's a Q16 is Canada. I can just change that to 
uh, oh my goodness, here your computer looks different than mine. So um, Botswana, for instance. Uh, how do I do this here on your computer? It, it is, auto completion doesn't work on macOS. Oh my goodness. Do you know? Well, then I just take another country. What is it? Q30 is the US. Uh, okay, so we run this for the US. And then uh, we get basically get the results for the same query, and so that that's why you don't need to actually understand the all, uh, all me the entire mechanics of Spark. You just need to identify where are the spots where they actually talk about Canada, and then if you care about Canada or something else, then you just replace that uh, Canada with whatever you care about. And uh, so it is a very editable, uh, easy to uh, onboard kind of thing. And here uh, it takes. 21 seconds, and then you have the publication record about the United States, basically, as known by Wikidata, which is incomplete. Okay, thank you so far, and now questions. <laughs> <laughs>